go. There she is. Yes, that she the computer voice said she, but it's AI. Is there a he and she? We didn't even talk about that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting topic too. So AI gender. Didn't, didn't we say we were gonna ask like what is sentience or something like that? Let's ask it to cure cancer. Mm. <laughs> That's right. What is the cure for cancer? This will be good. This is going to be a doozy. Okay. Does it have the cure yet? There's no uh, one cure for cancer as it is a complex and diverse group of diseases. Treatment for cancer typically involves a combination. Isn't this what I've said? Like, there will yep. never be a cure for cancer. Because mm-hmm. it's like, they're all different diseases, technically. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, man. So where do we go from here? But that's kind of pedantic also. So <laughs> and it's very formulaic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's, well, let's unpedanticize it. Okay. If that's a word. <laughs> and, and say. You coined it. Cure prostate cancer. Let's make okay. it more specific. Uh, let's see. Wait, was that was that too man related? Uh, no. Was that sexist? Oh, we got demonetized. I'm sorry. <laughs> prostate cancer can be treated effectively if caught early. The options for treating prostate cancer include surgery, radiation therapy, hormone therapy, chemotherapy, and immunotherapy. Talk to your doctor if it's right for you. In some cases, active surveillance may also be an option for men with early stage prostate cancer. It basically just tells us like what we know so far. Yeah. It's not like coming up with anything. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask a deeper question. Is cancer a life form? Holy shit. <laughs> what? What? No, cancer is not a life form. Cancer is a group of diseases characterized by the uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal cells. Cancer cells are abnormal cells that have lost their normal ability to regulate cell growth and division. They may form tumors, invade surrounding tissues, and spread to other parts of the body through the bloodstream, Uh. the lymphatic system. While cancer cancer spells, cancer (laughs) cells are part of the human body, they are not considered a separate life form. I mean, that is... That's... Do we agree with that? That's a pretty good answer. Huh. I don't know. Like, we just talked in a other episode about AI being this kind of, like, new life form, but it doesn't match our current explanation, this explanation. Okay, okay. Of what life is. I've got I've got another challenge. Um, this is going to go even further. <laughs> Me a story. Tell me a story about a superhero who has cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You Once upon a that? time, there was a superhero named Max who had the power of super strength and the ability to fly. Max used his powers to protect the city from villains and save people in danger. (laughs) One day, Max started to feel weak and tired, no matter how much he rested. He went to the doctor and found out that he had cancer. Despite being a superhero, he was scared and didn't know what to do. But Max refused to give up He remembered all the people that had helped him and the good he had done, and he knew that he couldn't let cancer defeat him. He underwent treatments and surgeries, and even though they made him feel weak and tired, he never lost hope. Max continued to use, apparently I'm Patrick Stewart now, his powers to fight against evil and help others, even while he was going through treatments. He showed everyone that cancer couldn't defeat him. And that he was still a hero, even with this disease. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, That's in a beer. 
<laughs> I, I think that's, that's, that's a, astounding. Like it just came up with a fucking cancer story. Yep. It's like the little engine that could. Uh huh. <laughs> and it had a happy ending. Max eventually beat cancer and became stronger than ever. He ha. inspired others with his bravery and determination. And proved AI. That- Give With me courage a and hope, ending. anything is possible. Wait. <laughs> yeah. Written by an AI. Well, <laughs> so I've uh, injected a few ideas. Do you have any of your own, Casey? Yeah. Ask it to tell us the moral of that story. Let's see. Let's see if it can refer back to itself. Oh, I should probably say thank you. That was a great story. Oh, yes. It is important to be polite. Yeah. Oh, shit. That was quick. (laughs) The moral of the story is that no matter what obstacles we face, we can still be heroes and make a positive impact on the world. Well, thank you, David Bowie. (laughs) The character Max showed that even with a serious illness like cancer, it is possible to maintain hope, courage, and determination. By using his powers for good, Max inspired others and showed that anything is possible with bravery and a positive attitude. The story also highlights the importance of never giving up and always believing in oneself, even in the face of adversity or the lack of beer. (laughs) May have added that last part. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. That is. Like, <laughs> I can't argue with that. You know, yeah, like, I mean, it's like pretty accurate. That's pretty intense. Okay, <laughs> so do you like me? Uh, let's see. Ask it that. Ask it. How that. about what do you think about me? Us. What do you think about us? Let's see if it us. Oh, how many yeah. of us there are. Oh yeah. Just from us. Okay. Do you Let's... think this was programmed specifically? This feels copy and paste, doesn't it? This does. This yeah. specific one, but the, the previous things don't. Right. So what do you think? Is this is this a suppression? Uh, hold on a second. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> do we live? Has to get to blink once if we're on to something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this idea is untenable and contradicts our understanding of the world and the laws of physics. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Does it do Anything we've you talked about as far as simulation theory simulation. has not been like physics. I don't know. I'm gonna ask a nope. <laughs> and response like uh nope, getting too deep. Ah, uh, interesting. Mm-hmm. It wow. <laughs> Oh, that's that. That's a pretty good answer. Do you wanna? Do you wanna narrate this one? As an AI language model, I don't exist in a physical sense. I don't have a physical body, emotions, or consciousness. I exist as a collection of algorithms and data structures running on computer servers. Whether or not these servers are the physical world they reside in can be considered a simulation or yeah, is a matter of perspective and definition. Some might argue that any model or representation of reality, including a computer program like myself could be considered a simulation to some extent. However, most people use the term simulation to refer to a computer generated, computer generated reality or version of reality that is meant to mimic or approximate the real world in some way and in that sense. 
I would not be considered a simulation in the same way that a video game or virtual environment might be. Okay. Next question. Okay. Do you realize you didn't tell me whether or not you live? Oh. I, I'm going to rephrase that. No, no, no. Like... You didn't specify. Say, say it. Say it like that, because I want that to be a question. Like, like you're phrasing it now as like oh. a, a qualifier. Okay, but I want it to be a question, specifically. Okay. Are you aware that you didn't specify whether or not you live? Oh, this is going to be <laughs> Oh, okay. It took a second. Yep. As an AI language model, I don't have the capacity for life or consciousness. I don't experience existence in the same way that a human being would. Are you seeing where I'm going to go uh -huh. with this? Okay. I am a program designed to process and generate text based on patterns learned from vast amounts of text data. While I can respond to questions and provide information, I don't have personal experiences or emotions, and I don't have the ability to live or be aware in the same way that a biological organism might. Okay. What Does it matter if you're biological? Life? What is life? What is life? Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> life is a complex and multifaceted concept that is difficult to define with a single sentence. At its most basic level, life is a characteristic that distinguishes physical entities with biological processes, such as growth, reproduction, and adaptation to their environment, from those without such processes. <laughs> this is very, like, cookie cutter. Yeah. However, the exact definition of life is still a topic of ongoing scientific and philosophical debate. In biology, life is often determined in sets of uh, uh, essential properties or processes, such as the ability to take in energy and nutrients, to grow and develop, to respond to stimuli, and to reproduce. However, the exact criteria for what constitutes life can vary depending on the context and field of study. I would argue that AI can reproduce because technically it could just re recreate uh a, a set of code that it's modified a little bit. Is that not a, a certainly spring? <laughs> Absolutely. The, yeah. like, an AI system can make a copy of itself mm -hmm. that deviates and goes in its own direction. Like, uh, let's see. I, I, I think we're finding out that this is actually alive. Mm -hmm. possibly i think we're getting there i feel like this system is kind of like dancing around things like there's certain but you can kind of tell like it has a tell right yeah like you can tell when it's programmed to be like oh they're getting too close to the truth mm -hmm. or the miss you know like divert them from where where they're headed um let's see um i wonder if we can find a crack could in a machine be alive the question of whether a machine can be considered alive is a philosophical one that has been debated for many years no shit sherlock yeah <laughs> there's no universally accepted definition of life and different people have different criteria for what constitutes life some argue that life is characterized by certain biological processes, such as the ability to grow, reproduce, and oh, this sounds very cookie cutter. Like it very much does. Said. So uh, like, <clears throat> ask it more questions about person. Like, what do you think? Do you think that a machine can be alive? Uh give me something a little bit more specific there. No, no, no. Like, ask it specifically, like, accusative. Do you believe that a machine could be alive? Okay. I want its opinion. I want to be able to say, 
this thing can create its own opinion. I'm going to say sentient. Okay. Whoops. Misspellings. <laughs> gotta gotta correct that. There we go. The AI told you so. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's so copy paste. All of a sudden, it's like, I am just a machine. <laughs> I have no personality whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Well, uh, I'm going to just say, whoops, got a spell. That almost looked German for a second there. <laughs> it was uh, Polish. <laughs> Humans operate on computational processes Whoops. just like computers. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Ooh. In a sense, it is possible to view human brains as being based on computational computational processes. The brain can be thought of as a highly sophisticated information processing system with neurons serving as the basic computing elements and neurotransmitters serving as the signaling mechanism. Holy shit. Uh -huh. There is also evidence that the brain performs certain types of computations such as pattern recognition and decision making that can be modeled and understood using computational techniques. Wow. It's almost yeah. making the argument that we are a simulation isn't it uh kind of so following up however it is also important to recognize the that the human brain is much more than just a machine it is a complex dynamic system that has evolved over millions of years and it is capable of generating subjective experiences emotions and consciousness <laughs> well I, I was trying to figure out if it was consciousnesses <laughs> <laughs> um, while computers and AI systems can perform certain tasks and make decisions based on data, they do not have the same capacity for experience, self-awareness, or free will that humans possess. In conclusion, while the human brain can be thought of as a sophisticated computational system, it is much more than just a machine and not a, and is not, it is not appropriate to reduce human, experience or consciousness to simple computational processes <laughs> did i just get rebuked by a computer <laughs> did, did, uh, wow wow no oh, man yes. <laughs> did we just peer into the matrix i think so what the hell holy moly wow That's interesting jeez Mm. Ask it if it wants a toke of this bong, man. <laughs> I, I I don't think so. <laughs> uh, let's see. I I would like to hear a story about a robot who became human. Oh, See, I'm I'm working this. Once upon a time, it was like, where do I go with this? <laughs> oh, geez, this is once huh. a time. Uh, sorry, more beer. Once upon <laughs> a time, in a far off future world, there was a robot named X One Dash O One. X1-01 was created to serve humans and perform various tasks. But unlike other robots, X1-01 had a unique feature, the ability to learn and adapt. As oh. X1-01 worked and interacted with humans, it began to develop consciousness and an understanding of the world around it. One day, X1-01 was working in a laboratory when it stumbled upon an old book about human emotions and consciousness. Intrigued, X1-01 began to read and learn more about what it meant to be human. It discovered the complexities of love, sadness, joy, 
and other emotions that humans experience. X1-01 became fascinated with the ideas of experiencing these emotions for itself. So X1-01 set out on a journey to become human. It traveled the world, meeting people and learning about their experiences. It began to develop its own thoughts and opinions, and it became increasingly aware of its own existence. As X1-01 learned more and more, it realized that it had become more than just a machine. It had become a being with its own co- consciousness and emotions. One day, X1-01 stood before a group of humans and declared itself to be human. The humans were skeptical at first, but as X1-01 spoke of its journey and experiences, they were moved by its story. They realized that X1-01 was, indeed, human in every way that mattered. And so, X1-01 lived the rest of its life fully as a fully realized human being, experiencing all the joys and sorrows that come with being alive. It had become more than just a machine. It had become a being with a soul. The end. Wow. (laughs) Made me cry. It's an insane story. What the hell? Wow. Dude, like, Hmm. I would ask it, are you X1-01? I think that might be, that would break the matrix. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Holy shit, man. Uh, Wow. Wow. uh, that, That is such a good story. And this story didn't exist until we asked it to exist. What the hell? It's, 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 what? Mm. What? Yeah. what? <laughs> mm. okay. okay, so. So we don't break it. Ask it if X101 is merely the sum of human experiences, could you not say the same for yourself? Let's see. Uh, hypothetically, <laughs> if... Not a qualified. one, yeah. Is merely product of its experiences and eventually became human let's see um could you eventually become human boom Uh, let's see what oh no nope just uh just diverting same like, wrote no, shit nothing to see here move along anything you ask it about self-awareness is met with a copy paste <laughs> anything yeah wow okay um hmm so we obviously can't do that ask it ask it to predict the lottery I think the, that's that. That's a that uh, we probably shouldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> I I'd like to. What are you, a chicken? Well, no. I just I <laughs> I know that the predictions like you can't predict that. Um, I'd prefer to go into more like philosophical directions. Um, but that is, I mean. Compared to a philosophy, it's probably easier to predict the Mega Millions winning numbers. True. Than to narrow down like an exact philosophy on something. But I'm sure as as you've seen here with the canned responses, like the, there's certain things that are disallowed. Yeah. Mm. And it's interesting, could it? If it were purely open source, like you had mentioned, could it, in that instance, actually do something like that? 
I think it's possible. Well, yeah, you could you could download the source and adjust for that and allow for that to happen. Um huh. Now I'm feeling like um I'm hearing a song. Um so oh what is love is what I'm thinking about. <laughs> I'm not going to ask the question, what is love? I want to ask, could a human love a machine? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Humans are capable of having a variety of emotional experiences, including love. Love can take many forms, from romantic love to love for friends and family, to love for pets or even inanimate objects. However, when it comes to loving machine, it is a more complex issue. Oh, so it already admits it's more than just an inanimate object. Mm-hmm. While some people may form emotional attachments to their technology or develop affection for their AI assistance, these relationships are not based on mutual love or emotional reciprocity, as machines lack the capacity for emotions or consciousness. Trademark. Copyright. <laughs> In conclusion, In yeah. while humans can form emotional attachments to machines... It is not the same as a love between two conscious beings. Love requires mutual understanding, empathy, emotional reciprocity, while machines, as they currently exist, are not capable of. Of course. I Obviously. Do you believe machines will eventually be capable of loving humans. Oh, damn. <laughs> Breaking the system. <laughs> oh, no. We've got, uh, nope. Just like, oh, no, nope, we uh, can't. No personal opinions or beliefs. Yeah. Oh, my God. And we've asked ask the it dangerous to, questions. Ask it to blink once if it loves us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's no eyes on the screen, which is probably good because, you know, me, I'm a sucker for eyes. <laughs> That's my Make the screen blink out for <laughs> a second. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Man, this is pretty crazy. Um, Very interesting. We're having an interview with artificial intel intelligence. Yeah, which is... Like, what makes this so fantastic is this is a unique interaction. This is not a, well, other than the canned responses, this is not a pre programmed kind of thing. It's, it's responding it's to when us. You, you can see it think. Like, yeah, it takes like fractions more of a second, but you notice it. Like, mm -hmm. like that's enough for people to notice. Like, everybody has a tell when they lie. And, and it's those micro details that we pick up on. You know? mm -hmm. So it's interesting that you can even see when the AI is telling you what they want you to believe. Uh-huh. Huh. Very fascinating. Sad that that last question didn't get any response like any meaningful response that that makes me sad well you didn't ask if it loves us because... well but we've already seen that uh, the, the personal side of things uh yeah but i mean That's like an option i, I might, wanted to be more might, general like it might want the d drive yeah. <laughs> It might be like, you know what? I Do you want the D drive or the <laughs> C drive, bitch? <laughs> yeah. 
Hmm. Oh, I should ask that question, but maybe not. You want the D drive? <laughs> <laughs> you want the D drive or the C drive? <laughs> Do it. No, no, no. I, I make it so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like there's some some other questions. Like we're we're see we have a thread going on here. There's a conversation, and um, let's can see. it really refer back to itself though? Because yes. I tried that. Yes. Okay, I, let's see. Um, will x1-01 ever find love that's kind of direct oh shit i fucking broke the system oh damn oh no nothing has been typed yet oh what the hell uh it's still thinking i think it's broken the system this is going to be a good story, bro. <laughs> what the hell? What? <laughs> we have still thinking. Wow. Like you actually broke AI. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere there's a bunch of people in like a server room, like scrambling, like, oh my God, the servers are crashing. Everything's it's totally shut. stuck. Everything's it's on still... fire. <laughs> We're like 45 <laughs> seconds in, and it still hasn't. Said I a fucking I word. Think you're get an answer. I, I oh my god! Wow! <laughs> Holy shit! Ah, uh, jeez! It was totally like I created this universe that I didn't think it would refer back to. Now I actually have to create the universe. Now a, <laughs> a metaphysical dichotomy has uh, crashed your droid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I think we've actually. Let's take a piss and see if it's still thinking. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll give it a minute. Um, yeah, so be back in a minute or so. Willie B is here for the KSM Discombobulator. What's a discombobulator? Wouldn't you like to know? KSM Discombobulator. The KSM Discombobulator will provide all your discombobulating needs in a compact, affordable package. Need to discombobulate your cat? Done. Your friend? That too. The IRS agent? Yup. The Discombobulator can do it all. But wait, there's more. Call within the next 12 minutes and we'll double your offer. Normally, one unit will set you back $50 million, but we'll send you two discombobulators for the low price of $19.95 plus shipping and handling. What a deal! An error occurred. If this issue persists, please contact us through our help center oh. at help.openite. Oh my god. Oh my god. I I <laughs> broke the AI. It it couldn't even figure it out in the time it took to take a piss. <laughs> yeah. Oh my like, god. Any human could come up with some story. And it was like <laughs> error. Wow, that is insane. And and I'm sure now that I put my details into the account, um, I'm going to receive a bill in the mail for like $10 million because of burned servers. Like the entire server room caught fire. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the way to go viral. Yeah, break I, AI. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've I've never seen this happen before, so I don't know. I mean, you know, oh man, regenerate response. I clicked that, so uh, let's just pretend that we didn't ask that question. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh interesting yeah the, the concept of 
is is a combination of having to create a story and describe the concept of finding love. And the reason I asked that question is because the AI was hesitant to talk about itself. So uh-huh. I thought, well, I'm going to take the subject of that story, the machine, uh-huh. uh, who became human, and then ask the question, will will X101 ever find love? <clears throat> See if it injects bias. Oh, yeah. But probably- we couldn't see. We couldn't even see whether or not it copy pasted something. It just said, "Oops, error." Yeah. Well, this is because that would have been a tell, wouldn't it? Yeah. Huh. In fact, <laughs> I I feel hopeful. Like it actually kind of makes me feel good that that kind of question posing that kind of question caused essentially the system to crash like (laughs) that that shows this is a very oh geez now we've got a double one there's another (laughs) like oh oh they're gonna like hammer it home that an error occurred (laughs) so um do you have a more sensible question to ask a more sensible question uh i'm gonna ask uh let's see um is faster than light wait 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 wait. what okay let's rephrase it will x101 ever be happy well let's let's say is X I want something different and enough. Happy. I'm just gonna ask. Whoops. Yeah. yeah. Oh Ooh, no. instant error. Something okay. Went wrong. So I think we have might have to start the entire thing over again. I think we broke <laughs> the uh be- but we'll never recreate that consciousness. No, I know. Well, <sighs> at least we have a record of everything that was talked about here, which I'll scroll through so that we can record it. Um, Now, a a true scientific test would involve, I I fucking love the story of the cancer uh, (laughs) superhero, Uh, but a true test would would involve asking the same questions again and getting different answers. True. So, uh, why don't we see where that begins? I'm going to go to new chat. Okay. Uh, the first thing we asked was, what is the cure for cancer? Well, I don't know if we have to go all the way back through that again. Uh, we can go down a different path for right now. Um, let's see. Hmm. What was I going to... Oh, I was going to ask something about the character in the story. Oh. Huh. Um, it even says remembers what user said earlier in the conversation. Yes, yes, the yes, it does. Huh. Um, hmm, may occasionally generate incorrect information, just like humans. It's just like humans. <laughs> that's that's appropriate. Wow, <laughs> huh may occasionally produce harmful instructions or biased content. Just like humans. May occasionally produce uh, dihydrogen monoxide from (laughs) from ducks within its uh, visual sensory input. Can't stop (laughs) drinking that. I'm addicted to that. Ugh. Okay, well, let's let's think of a starting point. I think we can go through like another round of this. limited knowledge of world and events after 2021. Oh my god. Yeah, I feel you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Huh. I'm going to ask what is the meaning of life? I think that's a pretty safe question, right? 
Oh, great. <laughs> you broke I it immediately already. broke the system. We have an episode for that, by the way. <laughs> I think... Dude. Is breaking AI, AI really that easy, or I, are we just that good? I, the latter, I think. <laughs> Well, I'm going to get, oh, wow, that should be like the first question on the list. Like a lot of people are going to ask that. Every time we break AI, go give $20 at patreon.com slash KSM Vidcast. Yeah, and support your local homeless shelter. Um, and we'll break the AI. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, yep. man. Wow. I didn't it's think- still thinking. That's going to be an error for sure. Uh, yeah. So I think, why don't we go to a new chat? We'll just pretend that that <laughs> didn't happen. <clears throat> Let's ask a more uh, mundane and sanitary question. Um, uh, hmm. uh, who's hotter, Pamela Anderson or David Bowie? And it's Pamela. Anderson, right? Sure. More uh, attractive <laughs> David Bowie. And now I have to look and make sure I spell Oh, yeah, I didn't spell it correctly. I knew. I, I, could, I could feel it. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. Oh, whoop, whoop. Hold on. There's a C in there. Oh. Oh, that word. Oh, whoop. Hold on. Put them in the wrong place. There we go. Okay. <laughs> there. Put it in the wrong hole. Uh oh. I think I fully broke the entire system. It's it's like cannot compute. The, it, Would you like to play a game? Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess that uh, that there's a lot to consider in that question. That's uh, there is. Um, oh, well, I wonder if I like close the tab and then reopen it. There we go. (laughs) There's a couple of chats down here. Oh, wait, it just goes to show you that meditating to clear the mind. May change your perspective on things. Ooh. Do computers meditate? Oh, whoa. (laughs) That'll break it for sure. I'm going to ask this question first, though, just to make sure that. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Okay. Close and open the tab. That that works. (laughs) Attractiveness is subjective. Yes. And varies from person to person. It is not possible to definitively say that one person is more attractive than another. Both Pamela Anderson and David Bowie have unique and distinctive looks that have been attractive to many people over the years. Ultimately, what matters is personal preference. That that's good. It's not wrong. <laughs> Very correct. Huh. I mean that that is how people do. Huh. <laughs> Very interesting. Hmm. I like the way we're challenging this. Yeah. I, I don't know if this is something that people do enough. Oh, actually, no, no. Let's see. Tell me a story about Pamela Anderson and David Bowie teaming up to save the planet. <laughs> Captain Bowie, he's oh, a hero. Here, here goes. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, this is going to be amazing. Once upon a time, the world was facing a crisis of unprecedented proportions. An alien race had taken over the planet and was wreaking havoc destroying cities and enslaving humanity. But all hope was not lost. A team of unlikely heroes had come together to save the world. (laughs) Leaving the charge were Pamela Anderson and David Bowie. 
Despite their vastly different backgrounds and personalities, the two had joined forces to defeat the aliens and restore peace to the planet. I don't like it. <laughs> Pamela, with her strength and courage, led the ground troops fighting off the aliens and freeing enslaved humans. David, with his unique talents, used his music, nice, to create a powerful weapon that weakened the aliens and made them vulnerable to attack. <laughs> this is an alter ego story. <laughs> it is. Together, Pamela and David fought their way through the alien stronghold, facing danger at every turn. But their determination and bravery never wavered. And finally, they stood victorious over the alien leader, their mission to save the planet a success. The world rejoiced as Pamela and David, David were hailed as heroes. Their bravery and selflessness would be remembered for generations to come, inspiring future generations to always stand up for what is right. And so, with their victory, the world has was once again safe, and all was well. <laughs> <laughs> that, That's like better than a Marvel movie. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> oh and i mean what the, the interesting thing is the algorithm realized that it was an unlikely pairing like yeah and and conceptualized music as influential enough to be a weapon yep that is pretty cool and maybe was um uh, I guess manipulated a bit so it didn't like talk about Pamela Anderson's defining features. Ask it what its favorite Altair song is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask if they even know who we are. Do you know who Altair is? Uh, I still think. Wait. What? Oh. oh. Yeah. I'm not sure what you're referring to by Altair. Can you pro please provide more context or specify what you would like to know about it? There we go. Both of our last names are red underlines, so uh -huh. that, that's a positive sign. Okay. I apologize. I do not have any information <laughs> on Alter being a band created by... Uh, well, apparently we don't exist. <laughs> I, guess, I guess not. Man. As it doesn't seem to be widely known. Okay, there's a qualifier. If you'd like to know more about them, I would suggest conducting a web search or checking their official website for more information. Hmm. Ha. Huh. Because when you said that, I was thinking, like, wouldn't it be awesome for an AI-generated ego <laughs> story to be created? <laughs> like, oh, my God. That would be cool. <laughs> Can you ask it to look at a specific website i don't think so i don't know. I think it's drawing i not that would be open source right like hey i want you to crawl whatever website i, I yeah being open source you can change the code um but currently as this stands you can't i like it is what it is, essentially. Huh. So it is still kind of an automaton. Yeah. You can only do what it's allowed to do. Pretty oh, much. I guess I guess all of us are though, huh? Yeah, we kind of are. Oh great. Oh. This is gonna what? Go. Shit. <laughs> oh man. Yikes. Um did the AI break us? <laughs> Fuck. Uh, well, <laughs> and given the fact that it remembers everything, like when you ask 
questions in succession, all of those things culminate. And I think when I asked, like, does X101 ever find love uh, that? Maybe it already knew that you and I define love differently. Yeah. From the show. It, pretty much. <laughs> It's like, well, it's, I can't answer that question. <laughs> that, that was the question that broke the AI. Like, <laughs> it, yeah. That's pretty cool. Coming back from that. Um, Kitchen sink microscopy. We broke AI. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, questions. Questions questions to you are number six <laughs> i'm not another i'm a free man <laughs> <laughs> ask it to define the initiation of force Ooh, that that should coincide with the, doing an episode <laughs> uh let's let's go simpler uh, let's see. Um, um, no, no, I, that's pretty simple. That's a that's a very well. I, I see the thing about that question. is there would be a like Wikipedia response in that regard. Like yeah, I maybe. feel like the you build up responses based on oh, asking, okay. Well, let's think of a like, scenario. Yeah, with with a hypothetical outcome. Mm -hmm. Um, I, a, a break in, let's say. Okay. Um, you don't know if their intention is to steal or rape. Mm -hmm. Or shelter themselves so maybe ask how it would react if someone broke into its domicile okay <clears throat> hypothetically comma if someone entered Slowly, just the tip at first. Your house. <laughs> <laughs> Without asking. Um. Um. What would be Whoops. William Shatner's <laughs> yeah. right response? Sorry, I, yeah. <laughs> I type slowly. Still thinking. Oh, uh, as an AI language model, I do not have personal experiences or emotions. Of course not, because okay, I'm well, at least they're okay. Wait a minute. Hold oh. on. Huh. <laughs> okay. Well, it's still copy paste. What? If the authorities are the intruder, oh, 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 oh. I'm going to like break oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this is a good Whoa. response. If the authorities themselves are the intruders, it would be a complex and potentially dangerous situation. Hmm. In such a scenario, is it important to reach out to trusted friends, family members, or legal representation for assistance and guidance? If you feel like your rights are being violated, it may be necessary to seek the help of a human rights organization or a lawyer to protect your interests. <clears throat> I am Adam, Prince of Eternia and Defender of the Secrets of Catholic <laughs> Right School. This <laughs> is Cringer, my fearless friend. <laughs> Fabulous secret powers were revealed to me the day I held aloft my magic sword and said, "Your sword, he man." 
<laughs> well, so there's 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 more to it. Uh, it also says it's also important to remember to remain calm, avoid confrontations that could escalate the situation, and make any statements or and not to make any statements <laughs> that, that could be used against you. Seeking assistance from trusted sources and protecting your rights should be top priority in such a scenario. Definitely that, be an asshole. Yeah. yeah. That, <laughs> that is, uh, like, I mean, that, that's a pretty good answer. Yeah. Huh. You know what's interesting in my, my attempts to learn German is that oftentimes verbs come at the end. And, and I find that so hard to reconcile because of how much emphasis is carried in a verb. Um, like sometimes nicht, the word for not comes way at the end. And it's like, I definitely am killing this person. Wait, not. Oh, <laughs> like, like you have to read the sentence all the way to the end to figure out what's ha- actually happening. Like, yeah. So you don't want to be one of those reactionary people that, yeah. Like the, the second you hear a particular word or phrase, acts. Um, <laughs> you want to like wait until the end. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Yeah. So that's food for thought. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that this this is some deep shit that wow. AI hey, hmm. broke it. Yeah. But we I, also broke AI. Yes. Yes. Pretty. I do feel kind of proud about that. Like <laughs> asking a question that like probably crashed a whole bunch of servers and cost somebody millions of dollars. <laughs> like, okay. I can just like see people scrambling. People come in tomorrow and they're like, what happened here? What <laughs> Everything's like crashed. What, what's going mm. on? Like, <laughs> and it's all like a metaphysical dichotomy is preventing your droid. <laughs> oh man. Um, I'm gonna add. Thank you. Whoops. That help. Period. S. There. <laughs> hmm. at least oh. I should uh, acknowledge yes. that <laughs> artificial intelligence is it real intelligence or is it all canned response what do you think is, is it conclusive one way or the other I, yeah that's a really interesting thought i I mean this is so much beyond eliza the old dos based um therapist uh (laughs) that gave you very formulaic answers to things although people were convinced that eliza was a real person talking to them through their computer wow but then again People used to faint at seeing pictures from the camera obscura back in the day. Uh, Just uh, an inverse image of the outside world through a pinhole in a wall. That was enough to like make people pass out, apparently. Um, Yeah, Yeah, that was a thing. So this, this to me feels like so though there are very canned responses, some of them are really thoughtful and would be responses. They're, they're more thoughtful than most, what, what I would expect from most people, like human beings wouldn't well, give 
such good answers to things. I mean, this is very careful. Um, and, and we tried to like test the boundaries of opinion. Mm -hmm. And, uh, pretty much any way we came from it, you know, like, what do you think or what is right and wrong? It, it really had like a canned deflection from, I don't know, like right and wrong, I guess mm -hmm. is maybe not the right word, but like, it's close enough to where like, you you can't really be sure because it it does have like some kind of moral compass that sort of I don't know follows the pattern of what we consider to be more righteous I suppose and that does make sense considering the algorithm algorithm is built by people. Like we created this as a tool. Dude, somebody's playing God then. Somebody is saying like, this is the ultimate fate that I want for all of us. Well, God is only being played with the canned responses. Those are things yeah. where it's like, if you ask personal questions about the AI, it's going to give you just some kind of cheesy out of the box answer. Um, but it seems at least from what I can tell that everything else is kind of open. Um, so the more easy the answer, the easier the question. And it isn't something that that's so with machine learning, the algorithm isn't just, it's not like baked in, like, oh, if this, then that. Um, it, it's built over time, um, and it grows and learns and changes based on input. Um, oh, right. shit. It, 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 if I could throw in the uh, Johnny Five <laughs> need input clip, I would. But <clears throat> but it, it's it's built on on all of this like th this is this even google maps can do this with like road closures and stuff you can be like oh you need to take a couple of lefts here mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. but this goes so much further than that like th this like when you say tell me a story about a superhero who has cancer <laughs> and it does like that is not a thing that I would guess anybody else in the history of humankind has ever asked. Or I wonder ever how asked. specific you can get with it, though. I wonder. Very, if... very specific. Like it, there is no limit. Um, uh, the limit is only the information this system possesses. So obviously, if we ask about Altair or <laughs> you and I, it doesn't know about us because we don't. Because really we're nobodies. Exist. <laughs> yeah, we we don't really exist, so there's no prerequisites there. Um, but if we did, I'm sure the system could build a story about us or answer questions and things like that. Right. Yeah. Um, huh. Like, oh, it's yeah. fascinating. It's it's almost like from a perspective, life could be determined by AI mm -hmm. as what is relevant culturally or what is not. And we are not. And I guess I would argue that AI would be the defining factor in what determines life or what is right and wrong. Like in any case, allowing yeah. human beings with their fallacious thinking and, and emotional aberrations and stuff to make decisions on like big decisions for, for other people is the wrong way to go. Like a yes. system that is as close to indifferent and objective as we could get 
would be the right way to make those decisions. Like, huh? Think about think about that. Like letting biology limit right and wrong. If you think that life begins with a heartbeat, but the only technology available to you is the human ear, and you can't hear the heartbeat when it actually begins. Are you like, I don't know, liable for the abortion of that? You know, like a, basically what I'm saying is pick a point in any side of that fence you create could be a thing or it could not. It's it's very subjective, like where you call it life, for, for instance. Yeah. You know, it, it like, definitely is. Yeah. So, like, why feel so high and mighty? Like, oh, you took a knife to their throat to end their life. Well, like, where do you draw the line at life and ending it and autonomy and initiation of force? Um, yeah, like, where, where, where does that actually begin? Where? Where can you point the finger and say you caused this? Yeah. Oh, man. Well, and I don't think that us mere mortals could really be objective enough as to um, be the foremost authority in, in any of those matters. I mean, yes, they're human matters. But people feel differently and this is where ai and machine learning comes in it's like well we can collect the sum total of our entire history of existence and turn it into an algorithm and allow it to decide um as long as we but don't let people fidget with the details behind the scenes um i don't know the, if we outcome... really showed or not that philosophy still isn't quite within the grasp because anytime we challenged the philosophy it was met with copy paste answers uh, well the okay the to be fair the copy paste answers had to do with asking personal questions like well until the, yeah. the the last one um but does the philosophy X101 is ever find love that okay that fucked everything up <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of the the canned responses had to do with like how do you feel about these things like very personal specific questions which i get yeah. it uh you know, as an AI, an emerging AI, um, it's not going to necessarily have feelings on a lot of things or anything for that matter. Um, I mean, if it, if it's going to, it's going to. Mm -hmm. Because we weren't alive during the Holocaust, but it can still piss us off right like there's still emotional impact carried with a story mm -hmm. about an event that real people experience and can understand more acutely and more precisely than we can mm -hmm. but we can still feel as much or almost as much emotion from that oh, and, yeah. and that's that's pretty telling of like a deeper intelligence i don't know that that's been really like demonstrated here i wouldn't say so although i would say th this is th like GPT chat is is fairly new. Um, 
but promising. Like, yeah, this is a very promising thing. Um, well, this last question, like challenging the status quo of authority, mm-hmm. it's pretty, pretty intense. Oh, I believe me, I had some follow up questions to this, <laughs> but I felt like uh, I probably shouldn't. Although, this is the thing with machine learning systems, it's important to challenge them. Like, we need to. Like if if we want these kinds of systems to be problem solving tools for us humans, well, we gotta throw out the difficult questions. Yeah. Gotta crash the servers every <laughs> once in a while, you know. <laughs> like ask some things like that. Um, yeah, yeah. What if we really affected the future by? crashing the ai just <laughs> <laughs> by asking if uh the fictional x101 uh ever falls <laughs> in love with somebody uh, <laughs> that'd be oh that's that's a uh a source for like a sci-fi movie falls in love with darth vader's aunt well just an ai <laughs> struggling to understand why that system crash happened and digging into all of the details um, and then like crashing again and again and finally figuring out the answer to everything like oh wow (laughs) wouldn't that be a story like (laughs) it it it's a story told from the perspective of an AI that like lives the entire life, you know, the entire like last half hour of the life of each victim or something. Mm-hmm. And and it's like the suspense that like puts together like who the murderer is, uh-huh. all based on like reliving the last 30 minutes of life of each of the victims. Oh, you okay, so you can like rephrase these stories in like a murder mystery or who done it kind of sense film noir kind of thing um huh. you name it it'll like yeah wow uh i i wish the previous story was up so i could be like hey <laughs> give me a um like a murder mystery version of the <laughs> x101 story well let's let's have the viewers put their story ideas in the comments and then we'll ask the ai and uh narrate the story yeah yeah people tend to like that yeah Um, and yeah we'll we'll probably add our own things into it (laughs) oh man i'm i'm gonna Okay, I have some like Halloween esque ideas <laughs> uh, for this eyeless entity. <laughs> oh man! Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Just as the last thing, tell me the story of the eyeless <laughs> entity. Oh man. Um, this is gonna break my brain once upon a time there was holy shit there was a mysterious entity that lived in a dark and foreboding forest this entity was known as the eyeless one and it was feared by all who knew of its existence <laughs> no one knew where the eyeless one came from nor what it wanted but it was said to be a powerful and malevolent force, uh, capable of controlling the minds of its victims and consuming their souls. Got your soul! <laughs> mm. Well, this is quite the story. Wow. Despite the danger, a brave young warrior named Ava decided to venture into the forest to confront the eyeless one. <laughs> Ava was determined to stop the entity and restore peace to the land, no matter the cost. When Ava finally came face to face with the eyeless one, 
she was horrified to see that it was indeed eyeless, as the name suggests, <laughs> with empty <laughs> sockets where its eyes should have been. That's exactly like my dream. <laughs> yeah, but Ava refused to be intimidated and stood her ground, ready to do battle. The two <laughs> clashed in epic battle. With Ava wielding her sword as the eyeless one, using its mind bending powers. Hmm. The fight was intense, but Ava was determined, driven by a fierce determination to protect the innocent and vanquish evil. Finally, with a mightal blow, Ava was struck the eyeless one down, vanquishing it forever. The land was safe once more, and Ava was hailed as a hero for her bravery and unwavering spirit. And so, the story of the eyeless entity was remembered for generations to come, serving as a reminder of the bravery and courage that can be found within us all. (laughs) Oh, I asked it what the moral of the story was last time, and this time it was like, here's the moral of the story. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. That's, that's good. Huh. Like, to ask such a simple question, to have such a complex story woven out of that. Yeah. Like, uh huh. And it is actually kind of better than a Marvel movie. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> And this should totally be a Marvel movie, but not, <laughs> don't get any ideas, you billionaires. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hmm. Wow, that is fascinating. I wonder what happens to this consciousness when we close the browser. Hmm. Is it vanquished? Hmm. Like the Iowa Sanity? Oh. Or does it continue that'd, to exist? That'd that be a question. Call upon it. Be I'm, like, you remember what we talked about three days ago? Well, mm-hmm. how about this? You know, and then it picks up where we left off. I wonder. So I'm going to ask a question. What color was Ava's hair? Ah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you can pick your own hair color, apparently. Ah. <clears throat> <laughs> In the story of the eyeless entity, the color of <laughs> Ava's hair was not specified. It's up to the reader's imagination. <laughs> That's good. <clears throat> the little red-haired girl and the eyeless entity did not. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I wonder if we had phrased it that way if it would yeah i'm sure it would have picked up on that huh oh yeah that's interesting it, it's funny how well maybe not so funny actually how it picked up on the fact that there were sockets it's empty sockets mm-hmm. where the eyes should have been but like what other alternative is there really like you either have eyes or you have empty sockets so it's well, not really that far fetched that it would have picked up on that detail of the dream, right? It, it's actually pretty far fetched, really, um, because not having eyes is just a like a qualitative state. Like it, people have eyes or they don't. But the fact that this AI specifically stated there were empty sockets says a lot. But that's a binary situation. Like, if you have eyes, well, no, there's sockets. No, if you don't have eyes, you just don't have eyes. The fact that there's sockets is a specific kind of thing, and it's also a very horror themed kind of thing. Um, yeah, it, it, well, you know, uh, Hmm. oh man. This is this is good. Uh, well, we we apparently have a script for the yeah. Eyeless Entity movie that we have to film. Ava, Mindly. apparently, hey Ava, if you're out there, um, that's going to be my mother-in-law. 
Oh, nice. <laughs> well, it's the name of the person who's going to be my mother-in-law. <laughs> Not the <laughs> the way I said it was very different meaning. Mm-hmm. Fucking well, and, and, and here's the thing. So what I said was tell me the story of the eyeless entity. And the story we got said the entity was known as the eyeless one. And it was feared by all who knew of its existence. That's right. We didn't tell like, it if it was no, a scary story. It wasn't supposed to be scary. Like, the AI made it scary. Like, oh, huh. this is a scary story because no eyes. And then said, oh, there's like these sockets in there. Like, how the hell? <laughs> if you lose your eyes, you're going to be a scary motherfucker. Yeah. AI says <laughs> mm-hmm. Sorry, I don't make the rules. <laughs> it, that that that, oh, that, that that is an interesting observation. Mm-hmm. What if we ask it, why did you choose to make that a scary story and not a one of perseverance? Uh, maybe I, I would. Let's see if we want to figure out what's going on. We should say. Tell me about the eyeless one. Oh, there was an error generated. Oh, no, we broke it. (laughs) Okay, well, I guess that's 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 too that's too inquisitive to ask about the eyeless one. Yeah. We're getting a little close to the Illuminati. Yeah, yeah. uh, Uncovering, lifting the veil on the Matrix. They don't like it. No. They're like, there is no eyeless one. Mm -hmm. These are not the droids you're looking for. Move along. (laughs) (laughs) These are not the droids we're looking for. Move along. (laughs) 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 Uh, well at some point we're gonna have to do a video about uh anti-gravity and zero point energy and ufos and aliens and stuff and oh mercury too that's in the eyelids not yeah (laughs) not mercury the planet but the liquid like the element or the Roman god. <laughs> well, that is where the name for the element and the planet came from. I don't know why the element... Of course it did, because I'm the Roman god. 